So it turns out that not everything is a pure component. And it's time for us to really engage with that. So we are going to dive into multi-component systems. And the time is right. Here we are. So um, quite often, when we have a system that has multiple chemical components in it, what we're most concerned about is either reacting it or separating it. So that's what we're going to concentrate on. Let's revisit our friend the Gibbs phase rule. You remember that's degrees of freedom equals components minus phases plus two, which is just two. And now for the first time in this course, we're gonna take that C term, the components term, and make it be two or a larger number even, but at least two. And uh, when we are worried about phase equilibrium, which is, as I said, our most important concern a lot of the time with multi-component mixtures, um, we uh, then have two phases. Remember, saturation always means two phases, unless we're at the triple point, at which point it means three, but let's just say two phases because we're looking at vapor-liquid equilibrium. That lands us with two degrees of freedom. So what does that mean? That means that a mixture doesn't just have one boiling point, it has a whole suite of them. And we need new variables to help characterize this. And that brings our old friends mole fraction back in. So we'll use X for the mole fraction in liquids. We'll use Y for the mole fraction in vapors. And every once in a while you'll see Z, which is kind of an overall mole fraction when you have a vapor liquid mix and you know the overall composition, but you don't know specifically what's in the vapor and what's in the liquid. Now, we're going to have to do some math with this. And what we're going to start with is determining phase equilibrium behavior for a mixture. So we uh, often, we might be asking um, a couple of different questions of a mixture. Uh, we are most often in this class asking about phase change, but we will also ask of mixtures what are their properties? So that is, what is the density of this mixture, for example? And that's something we will be able to answer with our, uh, our math also, uh, but we're not worrying about that part just yet. So right now, we want to know under what conditions does this mixture change phase, and what are the compositions in the two different phases when that happens? So you can imagine I have two chemicals mixed together, and I heat it up, and I want to know at what temperature does it boil under atmospheric pressure, and what is the composition of the vapor. And you've actually done this before, and so we're going to start with what I call the quick start version, which is just to remind you how you've done this previously. And how you've done this previously is that you've assumed that you had an ideal mixture, um, an ideal solution, and you've also assumed that you were around atmospheric pressure, not too high a pressure, and in that case, it is acceptable to use something called Raoult's law to uh, determine phase equilibrium. So we're going to just remind ourselves, get ourselves loosened up into this whole thing by applying that equation one more time uh, to a system. So Raoult's law, in case you don't remember, it's a vapor mole fraction of a particular substance times the overall pressure equals liquid mole fraction of that same substance times the P sat or P star, depending on how you like to write it, for that same substance. And uh, you have to remember also that the sum of the liquid mole fractions is always one, the sum of the vapor mole fractions is always one, because we're going to need that to be able to solve this. So when you have a two component mixture, a binary mixture, uh, which is uh, a good model to start from and something that you've thought about, say, for distillation, you can think of Raoult's law as a system of three equations. One is y, sub, y times p equals x times p star for substance A. And then you write it again for substance B. So you have to write it both times. And then you write whichever is the most appropriate version of the sum of the mole fractions equals 1. So let's go try it. It's helpful for you to open up a spreadsheet at this point. And uh, I specifically recommend actually an Excel spreadsheet because the graphing in Excel uh, is at this point superior to what you would get uh, in Sheets 
or in numbers where it's uh, too difficult to make a phase diagram reliably. So we're gonna make a PXY diagram from scratch artisanally. Um, so I want everyone to uh, take part in this. And so you might wanna set up the spreadsheet before class, or at least know that you've got to have it ready to, for us all to work on in class. And we're gonna do the classic mixture of benzene and ethanol, which is a pretty ideal solution, not perfectly, but uh, you know, it's, it's good enough for these purposes. And we'll assume we're at constant temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. And when we are calculating our PSATs, we're gonna use the Antoine equation, uh, which is in Appendix E of your textbook. And there are constants for both benzene and ethanol uh, in that appendix. So you'll be able to set up the uh, Antoine equation pretty nicely. So we're gonna do the easiest approach of applying Relt's law to create this phase diagram. So you've been given a T, so we're always working at that temperature, and we're gonna assume a series of liquid phase mole fractions. So let's pick benzene, for example. We're gonna do X sub benzene from zero, and then at 0.1 increments all the way to pure benzene, which is mole fraction, liquid mole fraction of 1.0. Okay, so we're gonna solve this system of three equations uh, 10 times, right? Actually 11 times, because to get the endpoints, we have to, it's 11. So for a given temperature, which is gonna always gonna be 50 degrees C, and whichever one of the X's you happen to be working on, uh, you are going to be solving for P, the overall pressure, which we don't know, so that's, that's an unknown. Um, and you're also going to be solving for the matching vapor phase mole fractions that go with that pressure. So you've got three equations and three unknowns. So just to reiterate what those three equations are, uh, you have vapor mole fraction of benzene times pressure, which is unknown, uh, equals liquid mole fraction of benzene times PSAT benzene. And you're like, wait, where's the temperature? The temperature is embedded in that PSAT, right? So the Antoine equation uses the temperature, and so that's how temperature gets to be part of this calculation. You're also going to write that same thing, but with ethanol. So vapor mole fraction ethanol times overall pressure equals X ethanol times PSAT of ethanol. All right, so that's two equations, and there's... Uh, three unknowns, so to wrap up our final unknown, because remember algebra, if you have three unknowns, you need three equations. Um, the, uh, we will have to use the fact that the sum of the vapor mole fractions is one. So by throwing our brains and some algebra at this, you should be able for each of these data points to determine the overall pressure, the benzene mole fraction in the vapor and the ethanol mole fraction in the vapor and then we'll put all that on a graph together and hopefully get something where we have pressure on the y-axis and we have both x and y on the x-axis and it'll kind of look like a, a sort of squishy football uh, arcing across our graph uh, on one half describing the bubble point, which is where the liquid just begins to boil, and on the other half describing the dew point, which is where the vapor just starts to condense. And then there's a mixed phase in the middle between those. So let's get on it.